Welcome, President Zelensky. I will be brief because, as members understand, our distinguished guests' time is obviously limited and precious. Your Excellency, President Zelensky, Irish parliamentary colleagues, members of the diplomatic community, Ukrainian allies and friends joining us online this morning, we are here in the seat of Irish democracy to hear from a friend and ally whose people, whose country and whose democratic institutions are under monstrous, bloody and vicious attack. My vita yemo shu mozlivisht, spersha hosht puch uiti, potocini viklichi, zia chemist sta kietza, vashanazia, presidente Zelinski. I yaraza yaza pushu vazel, stupidi pered, nasho u parliamentis, kuspelu tuta irlandes kimnarodom. Presidente. Thank you very much. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Tishuk, dear senators and members of the parliament, dear people of Ireland, this night our territory was again hit by, by Russian missiles. It was done cunningly and it hit civilian infrastructure. The new fuel storage depot was hit, and this is viewed by Russia as a target, and this is their attribute. They're destroying things that are sustaining livelihoods to people. They're hitting places where we store fuel, food storage de depot, agricultural equipment, and fields. They're mining, putting mines into the fields. They also have blocked all of our seaports together with the vessels that were had already agricultural cargoes for export. Why are they doing this? Because for them, hunger is also a weapon, a weapon against us, ordinary people, as an instrument of domination. Ukraine is one of the leading food supplying country in the world without our exports, this is not just about the deficit and the threat of hunger, hunger for more than dozens of countries, Asia and Africa, but even more because there will be a sh shortage of food and the prices will go up. And this is reality for the millions of people who are hungry and it will be more difficult for them to feed their families, especially in North Africa. They are undermining our state time. They're destroying our infrastructure and they're deliberately provoking the food crisis. And what will happen as a result of this crisis? At least there will be political turbulence and as maximum the binges of violence and new ref refugees who will be looking for saving their lives. Russia is using this hunger weapon. The worst thing is the city of Mariupol. This half a million inhabitant city was put under siege and they have blocked the access from the soil, from the sea. They are blocking the humanitarian cargo. They are not allowing anything to come through, neither <clears throat> water nor medication. While it was snowing, people could melt the snow to get water. Now they don't have even that. So they are bombing 24-7, airstrikes, bomb bombings in Mariupol. There is no single house left intact in a half a million city. None. The dead and killed was simply buried in the yards of the condominiums. And in many cases, they couldn't even do that. The bodies were just left there lying on the streets in the uh, remnants of the buildings and the basements. And we don't know how many citizens of Mariupol have been killed by Russia, but we know for sure that this was part of a general occupation tactics. They have done the same or they have attempted to do the same with the city of Chernigiv, with the city of Sumy, city of Ohtirka, Kharkiv, Izum, 
Volnovakh and many other Ukrainian cities. Maybe you have not heard those geographic names yet, but this is about millions of people that Russia was trying to destroy, continue to do so. When you hear these things, it may seem that this is not possible. It may seem that none in the present day world will dare to do that, but these are real facts. The fact is that Mariupol cities were drawing the maps of how to find the bodies of the dead who were buried in their yards. The fact is that Russian occupants were sh killing people on the roads when they were trying to escape the blocked cities. Until today, on the Ukrainian highways, we have hundreds of uh, short and burnt cars. The fact is that Russian soldiers were not even trying to take these bodies out of the streets while Bucha and Erpin was under occupation. These dead bodies were simply lying on the streets, on the sideways, in the yards of the houses, anywhere. The fact is that in the 42 days of the all-out Russian war, at least 100 67 children were killed in Ukraine. We don't know yet all the atrocities of Mariupol and the victims in other areas of Ukraine where the fighting is still going on. The fact is that as a result of Russian shelling, 927 educational institutions were, were damaged to 158 hospitals. They even uh, shot at 78 ambulances. They were targeting even churches and shelters that they knew for sure that there is nobody but women and children. And this is a fact. The country which is doing this is not, doesn't deserve to be in the circle of the civil countries. It should be held responsible for everything they have done in the Ukrainian soil. They have come to Ukraine as a colonizing army. Their state propag propagandists and their politicians are not even concealing what they want. In the 21st century, they are looking at their country as a colonial empire who allegedly has the right to subdue neighboring people and destroy the foundations of their independent life, destroy their identity, everything that makes us Ukrainians. Russian soldiers deliberately were looking for and killing teachers in the occupied districts. They are uh, abducting local government leaders and they're killing community leaders. Together with the Russian army, there were special groups coming in who were um, trying to destroy any political opposition. Now, when we are hearing new rhetoric about the sanctions against Russian opposition, I can't tolerate any, indeci any indecisiveness after everything that we have gone through in Ukraine, after everything that Russian troops have done. Today, when the whole world knows about the crimes against our people, we still have to convince even some of the European companies to abandon Russian market. We still have to convince Russian uh, foreign politicians that we need to cut any ties of global banks, of Russian banks with the global financial system. We still have to convince Europe that Russian oil cannot uh, feed uh, Russian military machinery with new sources of funding. Ladies and gentlemen, the people of Ireland, since the very first days you are supporting good, you are supporting Ukraine, and this is a fact. You did not doubt starting helping us. You began doing this right away. And although you are a neutral country, you have not uh, remained neutral to uh, the disaster and to the mishaps that Russia has brought to Ukraine. I'm grateful to you, to every 
citizen of Ireland. Thank you for supporting sanctions against Russia. Thank you for the humanitarian and financial support extended to our country. And thank you for your caring about Ukrainian people who found shelter on your land. Just think about it. 10 million Ukrainians have been left without shelter as of today by Russia, who had to leave their native cities because of this war. This is something we cannot um, come to grips with, but uh, it means that Russia hasn't yet abandoned their plans. They are still looking forward to subdue and occupy all of the Ukrainian people. We want to do our best to make sure that Russia will start looking for peace and leave us alone. So please, I would like to ask you to show more leadership in our, in our anti-war coalition. I would like to ask you to convince EU partners to introduce even more rigid sanctions against Russia that would really make sure that the Russian war machine will stop. We have to uh, put an end to trading with Russia. We have to cut ties of Russian banks to the global system, cut the sources of uh, their income from the um, oil that they use for their weapon and for the killing. There are mechanisms out there how to do this. The only thing is that we are lacking is the principal approach of some leaders, political leaders, business leaders, who still think that war and war crimes is not something as horrific as financial losses. I'm sure that your leadership can make a difference and change this. I'm sure that the whole Europe will be able to stop this war and bring peace and stability in the east of Europe. We cannot delay uh, any longer. The longer this aggression of Russia will continue, the worse will be the consequences, not only for our continent, but neighboring regions. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the people of Ireland. Our principal approach, our courage have already turned the new page of relationship between Ukraine and Ireland. Our mutual understanding and mutual respect is already at a level where it becomes only the question of time for us to start living in our common European uh, home. Thank you for the support of the accelerated procedure to provide membership in the EU, EU to Ukraine. With your support, it will be even faster and uh, beneficial to our both nations. And we need to start thinking about the restoration of our country after the war. We are inviting leading countries of the world to participate in rebuilding and restoring of Ukraine. Of course, Ireland is always welcome to do so. For example, in our Kherson Oblast, your skill of valuing the lives and community development experience, your economic potential is something that you are known for. So let's bring our efforts together and let's show that Ukraine and Ireland jointly can do much more than the biggest country of the world was trying to destroy. I'm grateful to Ireland. Slava Ukraini. Thank you very much.